In this video I'm going to be talking about emotional exhaustion and why this concept of burnout and fatigue is really important when we're thinking about people who have sensory processing difficulties. It's something that we might not obviously think relates to our sensory needs, however I have recently discovered how important it is for us to understand it. So this is a topic that recently I've been researching into and reading a lot more about and I just thought I really needed to do a video about it because there's so many parts of this concept of emotional exhaustion that appear in the children and adults that I'm supporting. And so by sharing the information with you, it just means that we have that better understanding of why we may see some of the responses to our environment in the way that we do. So emotional exhaustion or burnout is that first stage of emotional exhaustion. So if we're constantly exposed to stressful situations and as you can imagine people with sensory difficulties they may well be constantly exposed to these stressful sensory environments that they're responding to. If we don't deal with those stressful situations, we ignore them, we let that stress fester, this can build up to exhaustion when we just get stuck in a repeated way of um, feeling and responding with emotions. Now, you know, because I've mentioned it in lots of my videos, that emotions are based inside our body. So when I talk about interoception, we know that we recognise emotional responses to that internal understanding. So emotions are based inside our body. Therefore, this concept of emotional exhaustion can lead to physical exhaustion. And this is why I thought it was so important to mention it in relationship to sensory processing difficulties. Because we may well see people who seem physically exhausted and we're not sure why. We may see an emotional response to physical exhaustion and we don't know why. Now, if we don't complete our stress cycle, so our cycle from being stressed throughout that day, when we receive, a stress kind of response, we need to follow that through, through the cycle to relaxation. And if we don't follow that cycle, so if we don't rest afterwards, if we just power on through that stressful situation, if we just forget about it or bottle up those feelings, then that stress can slowly suck and zap all of this energy from us. Now sometimes it might just be really slowly over a really long period of time. So if something stressful happened last week, you may notice that your energy levels aren't quite up to scratch at the moment because you still haven't dealt with that stress. Now, like I said, for people with sensory processing difficulties, they're constantly in environments that might be stressful for them. And if we don't provide ways to help them to be able to follow through this cycle of responding to stress, then they won't realise either that that exhaustion and the way that they're feeling is because they've still got all of this um, feeling and emotion in response to that stress inside them. So the research I've been doing um, led me to find out about psychologist Herbert Freudenberger who in 1975 very first explained the term burnout. And so back then, it's been around for ages, and back then he described burnout to be fatigue from caring too much. And again, if you've ever been to any of the talks that I've been on, I start off by mentioning the positives to the characteristics of people with sensory processing difficulties. One of those is that we know that people with sensory needs are incredibly caring, whether they can display that in an emotional way or whether it's through an empathy. This concept of burnout can be because 
essentially they care too much and I just really loved that explanation from Freudenberger all those years ago. So thinking about how can we then support this idea of emotional exhaustion and prevent it essentially. So let's take it back to the physiological response that we have to stress. So again, fight and flight, a term that you're all familiar with that I talk about on my workshops and in lots of my videos, fight and flight is a natural primitive response that we have to any extreme stimulus. So when we receive that stress, so when something is there in and we're in that fight situation, neuro, neuro, neurological messages, hormonal messages, activity pushes through our blood with oxygen into our muscles and this then increases our heart rate. Now, when our heart rate increases, our body's natural response to that is to do something with it. And so we then go into that flight. And so our flight might be to run away because we're using all of that cortisol, all those hormones that were pumped into our blood. Now that's when we complete this stress cycle. So if there was a bear standing in front of me and I'd gone into that fight response and my neurological response and my hormonal response is pumping into my blood and all this oxygen into my muscles, I go into flight as in I'm then gonna run away from the bear. I've then completed this outlet of that stress input. So if we don't complete the cycle, so if we don't talk about our emotions, if we never think about it, so we push it away as far as we can, or we just leave it there, our muscles and that tension inside of our body never gets released. And so again, think back to the children and adults that you support with sensory difficulties. We know that their responses a lot of the time will be in that primitive fight and flight response for a large period of their day. So as this builds up, as we don't complete that cycle and use all of that response from our fight response, that can lead to exhaustion. And so the best way that we can support people who may well have difficulties in completing this cycle from a stress response is exercise. And I say it in quite a few of my videos explaining things, but exercise has got so many good health benefits. But if you just think, if you are stressed and you go out for a walk, letting your mind wander, letting yourself explore wherever you are, you come back and you feel so much better. And it just makes so much more sense to me in relationship to understanding emotional exhaustion. If we can help the people that we support to do some exercise every day, we're going to be offering a way for them to then complete that stress cycle. Even if we don't know if they've had a particularly stressful day, if the person we're supporting finds it difficult to explain to you what has happened throughout their day, or their communication is very difficult for you to understand if it's relating to stress in their day, whether it was in the, in the morning, whether it's lunchtime, whether it's right now by having some kind of exercise, you are giving that opportunity for them to be able to release that cortisol and the response that their body's had to the stress. And so you're really going to be helping them to regulate themselves even better, which means that they are less likely to get to that burnout stage.